happening to me sometimes. I just get up and just don't have any devotion at all. So sometimes, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes, what? Sometimes the things that go on around us, we dis- we decide that we're going to adjust a bit and we're going to compromise, and we end up not spending enough time with God. And God always blesses us when we choose to spend time with Him. So not spending time with Him, obviously, is gonna come with its disadvantages. So we end up feeling empty, like we said earlier, feeling lonely, and then constant, constantly thinking about our loneliness. Ah, nobody cares about me. Ah, I'm so lonely. Ah, 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 ah. We continue saying this to ourselves, and it becomes a trend. It becomes a habit. It becomes a part of us, and then we become depressed because all of this burden is just weighing down on us. And then when we say, okay, maybe I should take this to God, we're like, oh my goodness, I haven't spent any time with God. I haven't done any devotion. I can't go to him with this because it's going to be usury. So we end up not taking it to him. So we have a constant burden on our heart and we just keep on going. And there, there's this, this line in one of Ellen G. White's books. I think it's from the heart. I don't remember where it's from, but it says, worry wears the human machine. So when we worry and we stress out ourselves constantly, feeling lonely, saying no one cares, it really just wears us out. It really just breaks us down. And and we're not going to God to get that burden released. We're not throwing it, like throwing all our cares on him. We're just, no, I'll keep this for myself. I'll keep my burdens. I'll keep my worry. And I don't need you worrying about me. And then we just end up breaking. You're, you're describing a cycle to me. It sounds like I don't spend time with God, and then that that big space that He made to fill and to and to secure or satisfy is left empty. And so I search for something else to fill that space, to fill that space and I end up being addicted to that something because as I try to, so something also is coming to me, Rajani. So the enemy knows that if we do not connect to God and have him satisfy our emptiness, we are going to be longing for something. And so he works out also some abuse, some some um, some painful experience, some adverse childhood experience, some hurt that compounds the emptiness. And so now the emptiness becomes deafening. And so now I have to work on my own to satisfy that emptiness. And that thing that I perceive to satisfy, get satisfied, becomes my addiction. And with the addiction, we have the secretion of dopamine that, that makes you feel satisfied. And even serotonin that makes you feel happy. Then you might even have some adrenaline with it, your heart racing and pumping. And all of those hormonal connections now make you feel, hey, this hurts. You're good. Again. But guess what? It doesn't satisfy for long. We end up having a drain. We end up remembering, as you said, I didn't talk to God. So I can't talk to him now. I can't talk to him now. You start to go down. So it's natural for when you go up. Whatever goes up must come down. So you have this height of nice feeling and emotion. And then you go down. And, and the first time you experience that addiction, whatever it is, whatever it is that causes your dopamine rush, whether it's vaping, smoking, yeah. sex outside of marriage, pornography, masturbation, video games, Whatever it is that causes that spike and that high, that spike and high is never ever again experienced. And so, you, it, and you have to have a crash. So you go up, and then maybe after a day or two, you will come down. And yes. the come down is a crash. It's horrible. And you're gonna come down deeper than the previous. Time. That's right. So you're gonna feel the urge to go back. I need to go again. back. I need to go back to get this this next fix. And I need to feel exactly what I felt the first time I tried this because it worked. So I think. Hmm. So so the enemy gets us in the pain and he sets up that thing which is to be our addiction. That 
thing which keeps us hooked to his kind of way. That, that thing that keeps us hooked to his solution, which is no solution, it will just keep us away from God. And so we go again and we go deeper down. And so, yes, we have a cycle going on. But God is a solution to the cycle. So Adam's mind and Eve's mind, they were broken. But God wants to give us soundness of mind. His, he has given us love, power, and a sound mind. He can break the addiction. He can break the cycle. Believe it or not, if we bring it to God, Lord, and you know, these addictions usually start off with a lie. Just as you mentioned, Roshani. You're not good enough. You didn't spend time with God. You're worthless. All those lies you whispers. And then you seek after that thing to satisfy you. <laughs> you seek that thing to satisfy you and you never get satisfied. And then you feel guilty. So you have to do something again to feel better. So you go back for it. And then you feel good. And then you feel guilty. Because you are now down again. You need to try again. And so this vicious cycle. We need to bring to God those original lies. We need to bring to God those original lies. Because if we don't, it can lead us down a path to even self want to self-destruct. To want to end it because it seems that there's no end to this and it's the same thing that the enemy tempts us even with sexuality you know there's this attraction and you have all this feel-good hormone this satis well this is pushed by the testosterone and estrogen and then that's the attraction and then you go into that that deep well first there's a lost in so first of all, that is not even God's way to, to hold some relationships and marriage. But you have this testosterone, estrogen-driven passion and lusting. And then it leads to an attraction, which is fueled by the dopamine, which makes you feel satisfied. And the, the epinephrine, that, that makes your heart race and your butterflies in your stomach. You're like, oh, this person is right for me. And then you have the serotonin that makes you feel so happy. And what the enemy does, he pushes us next into a sexual connection, maybe deep kissing or petting and that sexuality. And all of that makes a bond with this other person, which was supposed to be a lifelong bond. And yes, mom, my mom is there, Dr. Lati, that's mommy. She used to tell me as a, as a young person, and I'm thanking God for that advice. It really helps safeguard. She said to me, Janelle, kissing, petting, and all of those things are in a gift wrap that God prepared for married couples. And if you go into that wrapper, you're stealing. And the Bible says, thou shall not steal. <laughs> she had, such a, she had a, a real, both of them, you know, have such a strong impact on my mind. And when mom said that, I'm like, okay. I, I'm, keeping, I'm keeping away from that. Even I felt like, you know, God was very good to secure me. Even from those words, don't steal, don't go into that wrapper, it's for the married. But, but, but now we're understanding the physiology behind even avoiding deep kissing and the petting and all of that because it bonds you. And I would just, I just want to encourage you because now when that breaks off and when, when that connection is not rooted in a love from God, an unconditional love, an unconditional um, connection and commitment, there is no satisfaction. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to add something else <laughs> to the sexuality issue. I went to a marriage couple seminar some years ago, and that's where I learned that within the confines of wedlock, holy angels gather about the bed to bless the act. <laughs> I don't fear you. <laughs> Holy angels gather around the bed to bless the act. Whenever, uh, whenever there is fornication, masturbation, thing like that, it requires the presence of demons. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that 
in our moments of emptiness when in the past was have happened where we ended up that way and god has brought a child through that god wanted that child here even if he didn't con and how the child got you. Well, no, we're talking to young people and by God's grace, if they have not already given up, there is hope. But I'm just saying, before you make the next choice, even to bond with yourself sexually in terms of masturbation and those things, refer to God, everything, because you are, we are inviting the presence of evil angels into our space, mess with our bodies and even with our minds. God is faithful. Ask him for the help. Lord, I don't know. No, I don't understand it. Please help me. Take this and take control of my of myself. I know you are well able. You know, some yeah, something else came to me about that. There's something else that came to me. But I think the Holy Spirit will bring it back if <laughs> we need to talk about that. But oh, I remember. If you have already made sexual bond, even with 10, 11, 12 people, I, you don't have to tell anybody about this, but I'm going to encourage you at this moment, pause and ask God to break those sexual bonds. Even if it's one, the deep kissing, all of that, they're very bond ask god even in everybody's eyes can be closed so nobody knows who's asking god or not and it's none of our business we god close your eyes i encourage you brethren close your eyes and ask god to break the sexual bond with you and whoever it is you're bonded to i know some of some persons I know, we know of a lady, we have heard the testimony where she had at least 100 names long, but she called each name and asked God to break the sexual bond between her and this one, myself, and, and when she was through, by faith, she knew God broke the bonds. Yes, God is the creator of chemicals, and he can break bonds. He, she broke those bonds, and her life was free after that event. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now she had less confusion in her life I'm going to give you that opportunity right now just close your eyes and you ask God to break the sexual bond between you and each person calling the names individually I just want to add one more thing the enemy works to cause um, to influence us into even a lot of sexual sin and I heard the testimony given just this week of a pastor who once was in a rock band. I don't know if anybody knows this band that I want to. I don't know if I can say that here. That's the song. I want to do you. Now, the group, as they sang that song, they were going to do the recording. And before they did the recording, um, Dr. Eric Walsh shared in one of his videos. Before they did the recording, they invited a group of to set a spell, cast a spell on that song. And the spell was that 14 year old girls would give up their purity and virginity. After they cast that spell, no pastor testified that they got many fun clothes and gifts. But most of them were from 14-year-olds. And thank you so much for that song. It gave me the courage to give up my purity. Oh, we're going into music, but many times we make are not even us thinking. We're not thinking. And after your prayer, I'll talk about what doing if we're not thinking. This is your prayer time. Ask God, was the stimulant or whatever was the circumstance, whether it was childhood abuse, whatever it may be that influenced bonding, your sexual bonding. And even if you're married now and sexually bonded to others, it moves and affects your marriage. Ask God even now to break those bonds. Time. We're even going to be quiet as you
Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, what's another? Oh, we did mention food, right? Food. Yes. <laughs> so, food food. Food. Oh, so, so let's let's talk about some foods that can influence the frontal lobe, and yeah, can impact the frontal lobe. So, you want to take care of the frontal lobe because we said that's where God talks to us. That's where our character is, and that is where. Yeah, we make the choices and the power of the will, our power to choose is right in front of you. So let's talk about some foods that can be harmful. Hurt. <laughs> let's talk about some foods that can be harmful. Or should we talk about those things which are helpful? We should speak about both. Okay. So we know what to avoid and what to go to so. all right so let's let's first talk about some substances now that can suppress the frontal lobe function one substance is arachidonic acid arachidonic acid confuses your brain cells and impacts negatively impacts the frontal lobe causes the frontal lobe to act causes the frontal lobe to be less efficient and functional remember we want to do everything to protect our frontal lobes arachidonic acid and you probably can google arachidonic acid right now to see the sources of arachidonic acid a-r-a-c-h-i-d-o-n-i-c you could google that arachidonic acid that confuses your pupils and damages your frontal lobe i don't know if you have found it yet but this arachidonic acid is found in meat no I should have asked you first do you desire to get the sound mind it, you know before we move on into this um, presentation do, do you badly desire the sound mind that jesus offers i i want to hear i heard an amen at some point i know i can hear somebody at some point do you want that sound mind that god offers do you want that white stone with your name, a new name? Do we want? Amen. That's the most important thing. And so as he gives us the power, we'll make the right choices. So meat is one of the substances that suppresses our frontal lobe function. As a matter of fact, we are told in the spirit of prophecy is yeah from councils on diet and foods councils on diet and foods it says eating much flesh will diminish eating much flesh will diminish intellectual activity students would accomplish much more in their studies if they never tasted meat when the animal part of the human nature is strengthened by meat eating, the intellectual power diminishes proportionately. So one of the best things, no, no, and I'm just saying this so many years ago and studies are just finding out that arachidonic acid actually affects the frontal lobe where God talks to us. Let's talk about another substance that affects the frontal lobe. Yes, there's another substance called 17-hydroxycorticosteroid. That's right. 17 hydroxycorticosteroid. And that's a substance also found in meat. It is too large to cross the blood brain barrier, but it stimulates the sexuality, it stimulates the lower passions. It's large enough to do that, but too large to cross the blood brain barrier. And so you can imagine you can imagine Teens. Oh, did I mention that the frontal lobe does not chip in until maybe about 12? Doesn't come to better functionality until about 21 and full maturity until about 33? 31, 33 in those, that, that range. So at 12, it sort of chips in. 21 comes to better function all the adults adults you can think about that some decisions you made at 13 or 16 or 17 when you get to 21 you're wondering was i insane you want to knock yourself in the head that's because the frontal lobe was not fully developed 
to make the right decisions. And that's why young people, as Rajani was mentioning, you know, the enemy tempts children and young people to keep away from those who love them and those who can guide them and those who have a better developed frontal lobe. But as you mature, you'd make better decisions. And that's why it's best to delay even marriage until, you know, the frontal lobe is fully functional. I wonder if that's why Jesus started his ministry at 33, right? 30. So that's that's important for us to recall. Now, 17 hydroxycorticosteroid stimulating the sexual passions and the sexuality in the presence of a less developed frontal look to make the appropriate choices and see why there could be a lot of teenage pregnancies or painful decisions and choices made in those early years. So that's one thing that can influence you. That's an issue. Any other substance you're recalling? Good. It's the tyramine as food first. Oh, okay. Yeah, tyramine. Where is tyramine found? Do you recall tyramine? Cheese. Yes, it's cheese. cheese. So cheese is rich, aged cheese, especially cheese, wines. Um, rich foods, highly stimulating foods are rich in tyramine. Tyramine confuses the brain cells as well. Tyramine actually triggers the stress response. And so tyramine, when, when you eat cheese or sausages and stuff like that it tells your body you're stressed you're very stressed so it has the function of the stress hormones even though it's not a stress hormone even though you're in a calm situation you end up feeling stressed this is another reason why it's not recommended to mm. that would heighten the stress right, right. <gasps> And then you wouldn't be able to concentrate on what you have to do. Well, that 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 that's perfect. Um, um there cheese that is someone said certainly. The issue with the stress response, as we mentioned before, is that it reduces blood flow to the frontal lobe. It reduces blood flow to the frontal lobe when you're when you're under stress. And so you're not able to choose to reason to think as clearly as we ought. So we want to avoid cheese, but you and know, others, others, yes, like cheesies and those well, crunch, not all crunchy things, I guess, but people who make money of putting the right combination of sugar, fat, <laughs> sugar, fat, and salt together to give you that crunch that triggers a dopamine response and a high they spend time and money and effort to create food like substances that keep us addicted you see the enemy leads us down a path and keeps us there anything to keep our frontal lobes in tip top shape so that we can get that new name all right, so especially snacks with you know the MSG and all of those things, the enemy engineers these food-like substances in order to suppress frontal lobe function and to keep us from being able to connect with God. Sounds simple, sounds everyday, like come on, like really. <laughs> it works. Yeah, it works. And now we're talking about all these things: food with tyran, arachidonic acid. And 17 hydroxycorticosteroid. What what other substances do you think could affect the frontal lobe? You mentioned it before. Oh, drugs. That's oh, right. Oh, legal and illegal. <laughs> right. There are some legal ones. There are some prescription medications that can actually suppress the frontal lobe function. But there are also many illegal ones. Well, legal even nicotine, but I'm not for young people that should be illegal. Nicotine in any of its forms, including vaping, smoking, um, marijuana, um, tobacco, all of these things, they get us addicted and that decreases brain development. And remember that young persons are still developing, so it's even more dangerous for teens and young people to smoke, even if you're tempted and pressured to smoke. And taking into consideration that teenage years are one of our most vulnerable years, 
because that's the time when we're not sure who we are. We're not sure exactly where our life is going to go. We're still halfway between being a child and being an adult. And in that transition stage, we're extremely vulnerable. So we're, we're much more susceptible is the word? Yes. to different, to these things. So being just, even just in youth time, it's the worst time to take. Not saying that you should, Ever. but it's just, just don't do it at this stage. It's Don't do it at all, because as you know, the the only solution, as we said, is as we think of Psalm one nineteen, one nineteen verse eleven. Thy, Thy word, word have I hid in my heart that I might not. Yes, it is only as the word indwells us richly, and Jesus wills and does in us His pleasure, that we will avoid those harmful parts so that 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 suppress frontal loop function heighten the limbic system, the, the, the lower passions, the, the feelings and the appetite and the passion. That's the only way to get victory as we surrender, as we surrender. So, what else is there that can cause depression? Well, that can affect the frontal lobe. Well, or yes. another issue. Is there another issue that we can look at? Yes. Media. You want us to go there? <laughs> sure. Yeah. What we watch, what we look at, you know, yes. impacts us a lot. And the Bible says, by beholding, we become changed. Mm-hmm. So if you are watching something that would make your soul blush, you know it's wrong. And by watching that, you your brain just starts to adapt to it. Your mirror, there's something in your brain called mirror neurons mm-hmm. that what see something, they're telling your body that I am doing this. Mm. So when you watch something, whether it's um, shooting or killing or backstabbing or cheating or lying or anything that you watch, anything you watch, your brain, your mirror neurons are telling your brain okay, I'm doing this. And it's not something that's necessarily adult. (laughs) It's not something that's necessarily conscious that happens, but it's just, it's a subconscious, subliminal thing. And it's very subtle. So we say to ourselves, "Mm, this doesn't really hurt me. I know I will not be doing this. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a good Christian. I shall not be doing these things. Mm -hmm. But it's just, the, it's just the way our body, it's just the way God made our bodies. That's why when we read the Bible, when we pray, we become more like Jesus. We be, we're able to see our sinful nature. And when we look more to Jesus, we become more like him. So we, we become better. That's and nice. we are able to get that new name. And we're able to find peace in the midst of all this turmoil. That's awesome. Uh, that, that leads us to that, that that's right. Wherewithal shall a young man intends his way by taking heed there to according to thy word? Definitely, it's it's reinforcing the word, reading the word, and as the Holy Spirit administers, as Jesus the High Priest ministers the word to us through His Holy Spirit, we become like Him. We end up looking like Him. That's that's so true. Because as we watch these things, and we become. By the way, we. Let me ask a question. When to muse is to think. We're going there. The, yes, we're going there. To muse is to think. M U S E. When we put the word, the letter A, a, a yes, that's right. A before a word, it usually cancels the word. It means absence of that word, right? So to muse is to think. So to muse. Hmm. To, to not think. Not think. So when we spend time being amused, we end up not thinking. And yes, we become <laughs> entertained. Well, yes, you want to help me break it down? <laughs> what is entering? What we are watching, what is a channel? 
what's the channel and what is entering through that channel and then I retain whatever is entering. This is, we are in serious times. And so when the enemy sets up the games and the, the movies and when you think about how he's twisting, he's twisting the truth in media right now. When we think of what's that, Thanos and all that stuff, where Thanos is really like God, and so we are we are to protect Earth from God who is coming. He just he does so many things, and he well the devil I'm talking about. He does so many things to confuse us so that we we're not really sure what to do, mm-hmm. and then we watch all these things with twisted messages. Like the Temple so, Moments are the bad guys, right? So. Even in Star Wars, um, Captain America, all these movies, Super the heroes. cartoons that we watch, the cartoons, in a sense, are playing double role. Half of the time, they're doing good stuff, so they're like, oh, yeah, they're the good guys. And so we start seeing them as the good guys, but really and truly, when you actually look at it from, uh, when you sit back and really analyze what's going on, they're really... And if you really apply it to our spiritual life, they're really the bad guys. They're the evil ones that are really trying to take over. It's it's a whole different study. Mm-hmm. But just be on your guard. Don't just okay, yes, there's a good movie, it's coming out, let me watch it. Don't just be ready to grab anything that comes out. Don't be ready to play any and any game. Sit down. As a matter of fact, the first thing you should do is ask God what to do. Would you enjoy this with me, Jesus? Can Would, you please watch and enjoy with me? Yeah. If you find yourself saying, um, maybe God wouldn't let me do this. If you if you really sit down and if you're honest with yourself, then you'll realize that not everything that we do, not everything that comes out is what God would appreciate and what God would enjoy with us. The word. Would Jesus watch this? Would Jesus listen to this? Would Jesus smile if he saw me doing this? Would he approve? Go on. Would he do that? Or mm-hmm. would he frown? Would he cry? Would it break his heart? What about the twisted things we watch? The, the, cut, the, the Bible stories that have taken out some of the word? For the, Bible says, the, word? the Bible says that we shouldn't remove anything from God's word, nor should we add to it. In the movies, sometimes they add, sometimes they take away, sometimes they go in a different level. And yes, it makes it come alive, it makes it so much more interesting. But is it is that what the Bible says? I remember watching the Bible cartoons. We used to, I used to remember when I was small, before we, re, we knew all about this. And now when I look, and I look at it, say, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says a completely different thing. And it's when we're children, many times, when we're children, when we're susceptible, when we're really vulnerable and gullible and naive, that the enemy just slips in a thing or two. And then we grow up on it and we're ready to preach down anybody else that's telling us that's not right. We're like, no, 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 no. I watch this and I am sure about this. But it's because we get it from we're really small. The devil's putting this into our minds. So by the time we're like young, when, by the time we're teens and early adults or even adults, we're not ready to get anything else that anyone else has to say to us because we're already, this thing has already been implanted in our brains. Yes. I would like to just comment a little bit more on that. As we watch, as we notice we have the part, whatever it is that we're watching, um, we, there are wholesome things to watch, wholesome documentaries mm-hmm. that speak truth, and there are there is programming that honors God. But when we're talking about much of the programming that dishonors God, the general right, and it doesn't fit up to Philippians Philippians four verse eight. Is it true? Is it noble? Is it lovely? Is it of good report? Is it virtuous? Is it praiseworthy? You know, many times, <clears throat> many many times the these um what we're watching go against philippians 4 8 but as we watch what's more sinister is that there's always a rapid changing of the scenes 
you know, our eyes can only zero in, you know, our eyes can only zero in um, for a short time and not in, in, in 4D, okay? And so when we have this rapid change of the scenes and our eyes have to focus in, that's just like hypnosis. We focus in, allow no one to, 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 to hypnotize you. You focus in on this light and then the hypnotizer gives you a command and then you're highly suggestible and you follow what the hypnotizer says. Just in that same way, when subliminal messages are put in movies and some songs and so on, and that initial, oh, we're going off into many things. I'm thinking <laughs> of music here. The heavy syncopation, heavy syncopated rhythms and all of those things. When those um, are all put together in this cocktail, which might just be what happened to the children of Israel at Baal Peor before they went over into the promised land, just on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole thing. Our heavy syncopated rhythms, rapid changing of the scenes, suppresses the frontal lobe. Because we have alpha waves, we have beta waves. Beta waves are more prominent when we're reasoning, when we're thinking, when we're doing an assignment, when we're reading the word of God, especially Daniel and Revelation. When we are doing, when we are gardening and when we are working with our hands manually, but more beta waves are prominent. But whenever we are hypnotized, we're in a trance, highly suggestible, Thank which, you. right, we're just there. You may be watching cartoons and you're calling the person and they're not hearing at all because they are hypnotized. So within up to three to five minutes after starting to um, look in on heavily syncopated rhythms or Rapid changing of the seas and flashing lights, like what we see a lot in, in bars, right? Outside the bars, you can see a lot of flashing lights. Mm. Right, because it hypnotizes you. It it shuts off frontal lobe function so you don't reason. The amygdala kicks in and takes control and stores all the messages there. And that forms part of our character. Mm. That's what we were saying about cartoons, though. Like I was saying, during the childhood years, and like Mrs. White says, from zero to seven, is where where uh, th those are the years where things are most impressionable on someone's character so between those years we're really vulnerable to the enemy and we're vulnerable to the things that he sent and that's why a lot of things that are out there a lot of cartoons are targeted at children and at teenagers because it's during those vulnerable years that we are that it's really hard for well i shouldn't say it's hard it's it's easier for things to get in we're open-minded at that moment we're curious we're ready to explore the world and in exploring the world we don't always have our guard up and that's why god says guard well the avenues of our soul your soul because during those years of being open and yes let's try something new i'm eager for something else it's during those years that the devil puts in his messages puts in his ideas his theories and that's why a lot of young people leave the church as, as be stimulating enough or hypnotizing enough and believe it or not brothers and sisters even yeah i'm gonna go there even the use of heavy syncopated rhythms and drums sometimes when you listen to the music you're you have to listen keenly to see if this is spiritual if you have to listen keenly Ask yourself, will the angels in heaven enjoy this music? Am I honoring God? All of these things suppress frontal lobe. So you may even be at church singing songs, have constant repetitions, repetitions and repetitions. Those also suppress frontal lobe function. So we may make choices, but we may not. Be. God wants to reason with us. He doesn't want us to move off emotions. talking about music. Music has a lot to do with how we operate. Yes. We might not think it's something serious. We might not think it's something major, but really and truly it is. And a lot of the things we listen to are some of our, what caused us to act a particular way sometimes. Right. Like um, classical music can help you to learn better. Study better. For some people, some people can't listen to music while they study, but it's, it's, recommended that if you're going to listen to music while you study or while you're in a class you listen to instrumentals and classical music um when we think back to what happened that was it bell Peor, mm -hmm. 
Tales of Backtrack. Balak, the king, as Balaam, the prophet, well, the basical, it's like an ex-prophet, he asked him to put a curse on the children of Israel because, I mean, they were going through, like, they were really prospering and he was afraid that he was going to get wiped out. So he asked Balaam to send a cur- to put a curse on them. And Balaam couldn't do it because God told him not to. So regardless of the amount of times, even having an animal speak to him, and the fact that he answered tells you that his brain was, his frontal lobe was completely shut down. Like talking to a donkey and the donkey is answering and you're like, answering back. Your brain must be gone. So during, through, um, with all of that leading up to, he realized that he couldn't get to, he couldn't curse the children of Israel. And every time he tried, he only ended up blessing them. So he decided to come up with a way. It must have been the devil that whispered it to him. Because if you really think about it, before, when he was Lucifer, he was he was the mm-hmm. highest angel. He sang seven parts. He he was music. So he must know something or two to get someone down. Mm-hmm. So what he, what he basically told Balaam to do was to use music, use females. It was like, I can imagine it was like a carnival sort of thing. And um, the children the, the men of israel the israelite males they were coming to check it out and they were looking and before long they were be- dancing to this beat they were fornicating they were sinning against god and that's when the, the curse was able to be put on them. and that's mm-hmm. when they fell that's when god's presence left them because God can't stay. You basically, God doesn't force himself on us. Mm-hmm. And if you're kicking him out, he's not going to force himself on you because he's a gentleman. So when they kicked him out, they're like, we don't want you in the camp anymore. We're happy with our lifestyle. We're enjoying our music. This nice, hard beat that's really getting our sensuality out. Mm-hmm. It's making us go crazy. We enjoy this. We don't want you here. You're too holy for us. Just leave. God is not going to force himself on them. So he came from the sidelines and cried as you watch his people cheat on him, basically, with other gods. So the music we listen to plays a really major part in how we act, how we think, in us spending or not spending time with God in the mornings or whenever, in mm-hmm. how we talk to him, when we talk to him, whatever we do. Because the what what goes into our brain, whether we're conscious about it or not, the beats that go that, that really hard. If you note the the music they play at Carnival is not quiet music, and it's not soothing music that could put a baby to sleep. And, and right, so those type of music have, have you has your body going all sorts of ways, and those type of things are what allow the enemy. To to enter us and prevent God from speaking to us and us hearing us. He does speak to us. But because our frontal lobes are shut down and the alpha waves are really strong, we can't hear him. And then when when we sit down, we're like, ah, God is boring. Church is boring. Whatever, whatever. We leave church. So we're we're really we really have to pay attention to what we watch, what we listen to, what we eat. What else do we I'm spending time spending with God. Spending time with God. Most and don't let the hormones get you down. Yes. Another thing is rest. Yes. We need we to rest. Everything <laughs> to <know. laughs> I'm sure. Yes. But rest. Definitely. Getting sunlight. Getting fresh air. And gardening. Breathing. Doing the gardening. Breathing in. Getting enough oxygen to the frontal lobe so it will be, you know, more functional. And drinking water. Drinking a lot of water. And, so, and, and protecting your frontal lobe too from heart, from high blood pressure and diabetes and things like that that can affect the frontal lobe. I think we've overloaded it today. We didn't intend to go for this long, but I don't know if you have any questions, but we are going to wrap up now. It was beautiful spending time with you, even though we get to see you face to face, but do you have any questions for us? I'm hearing laughter.
I don't exactly have a question, but it's just a comment. I just truly want to say to your daughter how impressed I am. I truly want to say to her that I don't know, but she must continue on that path. There are many things that she have said, and I know that she was honest, because not everything she said about herself was good. And so it goes to show that in the setting, she is still connected to God, even though there are days when the devil is in her courtyard. But I truly want to say to her, continue being the person you are. I know that granddad is so proud of you, both of them, both granddads. But I truly want to say to her that God will continue to keep her in the hollow palm of his hands. Thank Miller, you very much. Janelle, this is for you now. I want oh. to say, yes, you. <laughs> I want to say to you, as you continue to do this ministry, keep it up. Don't leave your daughter out. Don't leave the teenagers out. Because honestly, even itching beside you says a whole lot today. Not just about you, but your family. And I truly want to say to you, as much as you can, continue to do this ministry. Don't stop. Be brave. And whatever you say, just continue to have God guiding you. Thank you for the encouragement and the support. We really appreciate it and appreciate the prayers that we go with it. Yes, my daughter saying, wish we could see you. <laughs> I would like to ask a question to Janelle. Okay. Your daughter. What is oh, Jan What's her name? I can't really hear you clearly. Do you have a mic? Yes, I have a mic. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay um girls please don't beat me up but modesty is really important the way we dress sends a strong message about who we are um before we go around blaming god made men to be sight oriented thank you so in the beginning he in the beginning, he made men to be stimulated by what they see. So, it's not, I'm not saying that anytime they, um, anytime they see something that they have an excuse to do something wrong, but it's just natural for them to be stimulated by what they see. So, when we go there dressed in any and anything, then it really does something to them. And it sends them a message about how we keep ourselves, how we see, our, how we value ourselves. Um, when we are dressed in scanty clothes, things that are way above our knee. Um, I, here, um, Daddy has a rule. Well, we have a rule in our house that we don't really go out in things that are above our knee. Because the more flesh that is shown is the more stimulated a man can become and that obviously gonna it's gonna lead to dangerous grounds that we don't want to be placed on not giving anybody an excuse but things like rape assault all these things can come because somebody didn't learn self-control and because of what we wear we put ourselves up there like hey come get me so we're opening the, the way for them to do things or opening the way for them to be aroused for all of these things to happen so sometimes yeah oh yes. i saw something on <laughs> thanks so. i saw something on my friend's status one day it was long ago she got a really close friend of mine and it was a story about this girl who bought an ipad so she had the iPad and there was a case on it. She put, she bought a case to go with it. And her father looked at the case and said, Honey, why did you get that case? And she said, Because I need the case to go with the laptop. I mean, with the iPad. I don't remember the exact story. But 
basically he was asking her doesn't it make it look ugly and she said no it gives it more value i mean it protects the ipad from damage like if it falls the case is going to you know it's it's protection from my ipad and her father said but it doesn't look all that nice i mean are you sure doesn't it change the value don't you think that the don't you think the producers the manufacturers of the iPad are, is going to be offended. She said, "No, it, I'm protecting what they what they're selling me. I mean, this is going to help. This is going to really protect my device." And she said, "Keeping it covered up like this, keep it, keeping the iPad in a case is really important for it to stay functional, like not falling and breaking and stuff." So her father looked at her and said, "Honey." If I asked you to stay covered up the same way, would you respond that way? And she couldn't say anything. So, the things we wear, we might people might say we look like a granny. Not necessarily. I mean, <laughs> they, 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 people can say what they want to say, but you know that you covering up yourself is what gives you more. It's, it, it, it's what Amen. shows your value. When you go out dressed in all sorts of tight stuff, clothes stuff, short stuff, it makes people look at you and automatically, it's not that they're really saying anything bad about you, but automatically, they put a certain standard on you. And that's not always high. They're like, ah, oh, she's cheap. She's easy to get. When really and truly, as children of God, as, as females, daughters of the most high king, we have a particular value and we are very valuable so we can't be going out there and dress anyway because mm, yeah i gotta look sexy today no it, it it might look that way to the world but as a christian you must look modest and you must look like how jesus you to look that's what we were saying would jesus look at you and say you look gorgeous come with me to my father would, would he say that that's all I have to say right now. <laughs> well said, well said. Any other questions? What do you want to do? Okay, I just want to say good evening to everyone. Um, Janelle, this is Pastor Danvers. Can we see you? <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. We, we know each other from way back there, you know? So. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. So I, I sat there and I listened to Rajani and I, I tell you, I am so deeply moved and impressed. It is said that chip doesn't fly, fly far from black. <laughs> All right, so Sister Lati is right here. So. Um, the big block. This, this is a bigger block, and then usually bigger then, block. Right. So I, I'm just, I'm just very impressed, and I just want to let you know that I'm going to have you, Rajani, Rajani, as, in a special way in my prayers. Yes. Because Thank you. you are rare material. Hallelujah. Rare material. By the way, what's your age? Sixteen. Sixteen. Whoa, that's that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So I will be praying for you. I will be praying for you. Much needed. Because right, people like you you know prime target for the enemy right because you know we just want to encourage you to remain really rooted and grounded and connected and so proud of you god bless you 
and, and I look forward in, in, in hearing from both of you again. I will be contacting you personally because you have a lot to share. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Hi, good evening everyone. Janelle, this is Camille Silveri. You know me as from Andrews. Don't remember, but that's okay. Oh, you're not hearing. I'm saying this is Camille. That's I'm a little bit closer to you now, <laughs> at least on the, the computer. I'm saying this is Camille. You know me from Andrews. Where? Ah! <laughs> yes, and I, I just want to say this has been a blessing and a refreshing. And there's something that I can say that I recall that you were very close to your mom even while you were in nursing school. And this is the same thing you has brought on with your daughter. And it has showed us as parents and as mom, I have a daughter to a 14 year old. And oh, I can hey. say that it takes pearls and consistency and lifestyle and i'm very very happy to know that we still have women who are stalwarts and standing up for god and their young girls are following in their footsteps so we just want to thank the lord and as pastor says we have to pray for her because the devil yes. heard everything that he says but he's and he's going to try and set roadblocks for her and for all our children but god is the god of flying traps Amen. so That's we are right. secured with God because we're going home soon and we won't have to be struggling with any one of this so again Amen. and I hope my children heard everything that you were saying to to them because indeed uh, it, it is hard it is hard and I'm happy that moms are sharing what God has anointed and appointed us to share to our children. And we can do so much and no more, and God will do the rest. But love you, and may God continue to bless you and your family tremendously. Thank you. Right. Good to see you. Thank you for the encouragement, Camille. Great to see you. Sister Janelle Hi. and Rajani. Hello. I'm Ashara. I'm from the Maranatha Church. And I just want to say a special thanks to you, first, Sister Janelle, for researching and living and being an example for your daughter and Rajani, for staying close to your mother and for listening and for allowing yourself to be molded by her and by God. And I hope and pray that, that as you, <laughs> as you, yes, Sister Lati, right here, yes. <laughs> it, we, we can see that it's a generational thing from mother to daughter, from mother to and daughter. Father. All right, father too. from, also from parents too. to children. <laughs> from parents to children and we just pray that the, the cycle will continue 
that the Holy Spirit will really continue to be with your family and that you will continue to share and impact lives and encourage others because we have learned so much today from your family and we are hoping and praying that we can institute all that we have learned so that our families can be a reflection of your family and that the generational cycle will not continue in a negative way but in a positive way because we're all working towards getting to heaven. We know that we, our works are not what will make it but by the grace of God we know that we, once we partner with him he will take us all the way. So continue in your ministry, continue in your family life, continue to show forth the praises of God because you are causing ripples to go through the society and that's how we can change one person at a time, one family at a time. God bless you. <laughs> And I, um, I, I don't mean to extend the time, but I also want to say, not to the young people now, but to the parents that are there, please stay with your children and with your youth and play an, you play an important role in their lives. And especially, well, I shouldn't say especially, but both father and mother play a special role in a child's life. And I know a lot of youth, a lot of teens, a lot of children don't have their fathers for various reasons. And God will fill the gap. God will fill the emptiness in our hearts. But parents, I, I want to say this because I'm really blessed to have these two parents that I have because they listen to me and they understand that we, we communicate well with each other. You see, a lot of teens go through a lot of things they're experiencing different things. They start to feel these sensations that they've never felt before and they don't know what to do with themselves. And their, their friends are telling them, come on, just try this, do that. Nobody really cares, it won't really hurt. And they're not getting guidance because blind can't lead the blind. And many times when we, as, meaning we as teens, when we tell our parents, our parents are like, Charlie, you want, if you ever do this again. Mm -hmm. so of course, discipline is very important. But sometimes we just want somebody to listen to us and to understand how we feel. And I know many times the reactions we get is because of the fear that of us going through the same thing that you as parents have gone through. But suppressing that fear and that anxiety and just toning down the protectiveness just a little bit just understand how we feel connect with what we're saying and in a loving way not in a rough harsh hashing manner just gently and calmly explain to us and guide us that way parents you will realize that your children your teens especially will come out and talk more about what they're going through so that's all i wanted to say I think it's time I say it again. Rajani, you are solid. Honestly, I am so impressed. Yes, Janelle, I am so impressed with your baby. And I want to say that deliberately. I am so, so happy to know that we still have young people who will shout it though the heavens fall and honestly i cry many times in that chair i am listen me i am bub Janelle, you know i am bubbling with joy just to know that we still have young people who call speed speed and say what it is and she's not being prompted or pinch or Shop shoulder. She just saying it like it is. And I want for us, even in the Cayman Islands, our young people, yes, you may mention parents, stick close to them, but sometimes they're pushing you off. Sometimes they're shooting you away. They don't need you right now. And so for you to say that is only for us to draw closer. But trust me, 
You have brought smiles and tears <laughs> simultaneously. And I am happy. Roger, don't laugh. You know better than that. And I am happy. happy. I'm happy with you. I'm happy with you. <laughs> I know, right? Good to see you. Good Same see you. here. <laughs> All right. So we have come to the end of part two. And we don't have a part three. We did not intend to have a part two because we thought it would have been ended in the first part. So, Janelle and Rajone, thanks so very much for stepping up to the plate this afternoon. And we were blessed. I sat here, kind of stuttered in my own mind myself because I did not understand that Rajone had gotten to that place. Um, and so I recognized, as Pastor Danvers said, we have to pray excessively a lot more. If we used to pray twice a day, we have to triple that and we have to keep on doing it. So may God bless you both and thank you very much. And you did um, a revision in a very subtle way. So we were still reminded of some of the things we talked about in the first session. And now you did such a tremendous job. And you went in different directions in bringing us the understanding of how we need to connect with God. And how it's through him that we are able to do what he wants us to do. And to see how well we manage the challenges not only youths but all of us face and so thank you so very much again I know the church would have wanted to do a vote of thanks you wanted to say something oh a young person wants to speak oh thank you you may sit here so I would oh. like to say that it was true that you were speaking we 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 do look up we do look uh, like we we um it's like so we 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 watch stuff that you said is true we we get fascinated with the things that you said we do so it's not like we don't do it it's like we do it because we're kids and we want to have fun but but if 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 other people want to have fun it's nothing wrong it's just that people want to have fun and live a good life oh could you respond to him a little please so remember that we're living for god and the ultimate thing is to see him and we want to live you want to live with jesus right yes Right. And it's, heaven is not going to be boring. Heaven is going to be exciting and fun and it's going to be better than anything we've experienced here. It's not going to be drag and no. So we're wor working towards heaven. We're working towards Jesus. We're working towards him. And when we do these things, yeah, it might seem like fun, but at the same time, it's damaging us and it's not the right thing sometimes. So we have to we have to put aside the fun because remember the devil uses the fun sometimes and we don't want him to we don't want him to be able to access us. Do you want to be demon possessed? No. No. Neither none of us want to be possessed. We don't want the devil in our hearts. So we have to act to help us. And sometimes I know Sometimes I know it's really hard. You really want to watch that. You really want to play it. But it's it's hard. So we have to ask God to help us, okay? And even though you want to have fun, just put, think about heaven and think about living forever and never dying. And you'll realize that it's worth giving up what is thought of as fun. It only damages your, your mind. And it only makes... It doesn't help you in, in any way and yeah you can have other trust me i used to think that so sometimes i used to think that being a christian was boring but i've experienced that it's not boring it's exciting it's really exciting you can learn so many things and yeah you can get asked on my daddy for a pet if you don't have one sorry mom and dad <laughs> so, but, so my my dad always told me there's a time for everything mm -hmm. 
There is a time for everything. So there are some fun things he can do and not yeah. those other things.